Hello, I'm Dan with On One. I'm excited to welcome you to the On One family. I'm here to give you the best quick start to using On One Photo ROM. Getting started with any new app can take a little bit to get used to, and with something as powerful as Photo Raw, that can be a little intimidating. But don't worry, I'm here to make sure that you have the best possible experience, from installation to editing your first photos. I'm going to get you up and running in no time. Let's go! To get started, you need to install On One Photo Raw. The best way to do that is via the On One Application Manager. If you've already purchased or subscribed to Photo Raw, you can just click the Install button. If you're downloading it as a trial, go to the Free Trials tab and click on Try for Free. It will seamlessly install it. When it's done installing, you'll see it on the Install tab. Press the Open button to launch it. You can also launch it just like you'd open any other application on your computer by double-clicking the icon on the desktop or finding it in your Applications folder. Once Photo Row launches, it's time to find some photos to work with. You can get started on a single photo and really get into the action by selecting Edit Photo. Or you can browse a folder where you keep your photos, or you can create a catalog of where all of your photos live. If you're coming from something like Lightroom, you might be comfortable with this option. For now, to get started quickly, I'm going to use the Browse a Folder option. Most of us keep our photos in one defined location, either on an external drive or in your My Pictures or Photos folder. I have an external drive called Photos, and inside of that, I keep a folder called My Photos, and then all of my photos are organized in categories under that. So I'm just going to select to browse that My Photos folder. Over here on the left-hand side, in the Local Drive section, you can see the drives that are attached to your computer. Right here, you'll see the Photos drive, and inside of that, the My Photos folder. And inside of that, you'll see the subfolders for all the categories, the way that I organize my photos. Something unique about Photo Raw is you'll see your folders as icons as well. So in the middle view, you'll see those same folders. So the same folders that we see in this tree view on the left are icons on the right. And you can navigate those folders by simply double clicking on them. I'm going to go into my Landscapes folder and continue to drill down until I find photos from a recent photo shoot. Here we are. We're in a folder full of photos now. You'll notice on the left-hand side, you'll see the folders that I've navigated to to reach this folder. From here, changing photos is easy. You can simply use your arrow keys to navigate up or down or left or right. If you'd like to see your photo larger, simply double-click on it. And again, to view it even closer, just click or use the zoom gesture. To go back to a fit view, press again or use the pinch gesture. If you'd like to see the other photos that are in the folder, you can use film strip view. You can change your view mode right down here from the view mode selector. I'll just change it to film strip view. This lets me see the other photos in the folder. And again, I can just use my arrow keys to navigate or I can use a swipe gesture to change between photos. In the top right in the info pane, you'll see information about your photo. If you'd like to see more or edit additional metadata, roll down the metadata pane. Here you have access to the full EXIF and IPTC metadata. A great way to keep track of your favorite photos is to use the star ratings. So in the info pane, I can simply give this photo a five star rating. I can then easily find just my five star photos by using the search bar at the top. I'll just turn on the attribute tab and select five stars. When I find a photo that I'd like to work on, I'll just take it from browse into edit. To do that, just select edit over in the module selector on the left hand side. In edit on the left hand side, you'll see all of the tools. We'll get to using those in just a minute. On the right hand side, you'll see the info pane, the layers pane for creating multiple layers or combining multiple photos together, and then below that, the tabs for edit. Edit is divided into five different tabs, each with their own function. Typically, you're going to use them in the order that's listed. You'll start in the develop tab. That's where you'll do your basic tone and color adjustments. Then you'll move on to the local adjustments tab to burn or dodge or make adjustments to local regions. And then effects, sky, and portrait are all for adding specialized effects. The first thing I do when I open most photos is use Brilliance AI. Brilliance AI is like a fast forward button to your workflow. It does all of the tone and color correction adjustments for you automatically. Simply enable it and you'll see how it's adjusted the exposure, the contrast, and the move the cool color cast. And I can adjust how strong it is using the amount slider. I can dial it in just to my taste. You can also see it's added an automatic adjustment to the sky where it's detected it, and I can control how strong that sky darkening or enhancing adjustment is. I know I'm going to replace the sky in this photo, so I'm going to leave it off. 
Now, if you like to manually adjust the tone and color options, you can do that as well. I'm just gonna roll brilliance up and open the tone and color pane. And here you'll see the sliders that you're familiar with for exposure and brightness, contrast, highlight, shadows, things like that, as well as your color temperature. They've all been preset automatically by Brilliance, but you can adjust them to your heart's content. Below that, you'll also see controls for adjusting noise to remove noise and sharpness. You can also adjust lens correction for correcting the lens. I'm just going to enable it. You'll see how it automatically corrects the lens distortion for me. The next thing I do in most photos is I'd probably use the crop tool and do any retouching that I want to do before I get onto the stylizing. So I'm going to start off with the crop tool. With the crop tool, you simply drag the corners to create whatever shape you want if you're just doing a free form crop. However, many times you need to crop to a specific size or aspect ratio. For this project, I'm making a screensaver for my TV, so I want to use the 16 by 9 option so that it matches my TV's format. Now I simply just drag to position the photo within the frame and adjust the handles until I get the composition that I like. I can also rotate the photo to level it if I want to as well. Just move your tool outside of the edge and now you can rotate the photo to level it. When you're happy with the results, hit enter or press the check button. Now is a good time to do any retouching as well. I'm going to use the healing brush right here to remove the foundation from this silo that collapsed. Simply brush over the region you want to get rid of and then drag the source to an area that will heal the section and make it look realistic. And you can do that as many times as you need to. When you're done, hit the check mark button. Now it's time to make some targeted adjustments to just areas in the photo. A great way to do that is to use the Super Select AI tool right over here on the left hand side. You notice as I mouse over the photo, different regions automatically turn red. These are all potential areas that Super Select detects automatically that I can add adjustments to. In this case, let's add an adjustment to the grass. I want to give it kind of a warm, rich glow. So I'm just going to click on the grass. It turns blue to tell me that it's selected. And then I can right click and I can select from any of the different presets for effects or any of my local adjustments. I'm going to go to the glow category and I can simply mouse over them until I find one that I like. I'm looking for one that adds just a little bit of a rich, warm color to the grass. There we go. That radiance glow works pretty well. You notice when I do that, it switches to the effects tab and shows me the filter that it just added and I can turn it on or off or even adjust how strong it is. Let's add another adjustment, this time to the barn. I'll simply click on the barn, right click. This time I want to add some sharpness and detail, so I'll add a dynamic contrast filter. I'll just use the natural option. There we go. You can see it added another filter to the effects tab and again I can turn that on or off to make an adjustment. When I'm done using Super Select, just hit the check mark to put it away. In the Effects tab, you can also add as many filters as you want. Simply press the Add Filter button, and you can choose from the over 30 different filters that you can apply to your photo. For this example, let's add a vignette. That will darken the edges. I'm going to use the Big Softy option, and then I'll just dial in the amount that I want. I can even move the vignette around using the Vignette Centering tool so I can make sure that it's weighted a little to the left so it doesn't darken my barn. You can also start with presets. To open the preset drawer, press this little button down here and it will open up the preset browser. There are hundreds of curated presets in different categories that you can apply to your photos. Simply click on a category, you'll see thumbnails of your photo, and as you mouse over them, you'll see what the preset would look like applied to your photo. You can just click on one to apply it. You can also save presets so you can use them over and over again. For this photo, let's replace the sky as well. So I'm going to go to the sky tab and I'll start just by using one of the built-in styles. There we go. That's a big improvement. All right, let's take a look at the before and after. There's our original photo and after. Now keep in mind everything that on one photo Ron does is non-destructive. All of the adjustments and edits I've made here are simply instructions. I can go back and change them at any time. The original raw photo on disk hasn't been altered at all. That also means in order to share this photo with someone else, we need to save a copy with those settings applied to it. An easy way to do that is to use the Save As or the Quick Export option from the File menu. I'm just going to use Save As, select where you'd like to store your photo. I'm just going to put this one on my desktop. 
and then pick the format that you'd like to save it as. I'll make it a JPEG. Then hit the Save button. If you need more control over the export, or if you're exporting multiple photos at the same time, you can use the full export dialog. Click on the More button and select Export. From here, you can control the file naming, the destination location, the file type. You can also resize the photo, change its color space, control, sharpening, and even add a watermark if necessary. All right, that gives you a great start in what you can do with Photo Raw, but that's just the tip of the iceberg. It's also the perfect app for portrait retouching. You can see how here it can instantly find a face, smooth out the skin, retouch the eyes on the mouth all in one step. I didn't have to use any brushing for it. Combine that with the powerful AI adaptive presets that understand the content of your photo and can do things like replacing backgrounds in a snap. Take a look at this before and after. Even through tough stuff like hair, it can do an amazing job. PhotoRaw also has many tools for combining photos together in multi-image workflows, such as HDR. I'm just going to select a bracket, click on the More button, and select Merge to HDR. Creating elegant, natural-looking HDR photos is a snap. It's a similar process for creating panoramas or stacking multiple photos to achieve the ultimate in depth of field, but with control that's been unimaginable until now. You can even use it to create stunning time-lapse videos from multiple exposures. On One Photo Raw also includes a layered workflow. It can accomplish many of the same tasks that you would in Adobe Photoshop. You can create multiple layers, combine photos together, control their size, blending mode and opacity. You can also create layer masks to blend different layers together. You can even add color fill layers and text as its own layer. It gives you the power to create multiple layered composites or even create layouts right inside of On One Photo Raw. The amazing Resize AI module includes everything you need to prepare your photos for print. It can resize or interpolate your photos to a much greater degree than any other app can. Let's take a look at this photo, blown up 400%. These are the pixels from the original photo. And after Resize AI's amazing machine learning model has been applied to interpolate the photo, reduce the noise, and recover the detail in the faces. It's simply amazing what it can accomplish. PhotoRaw is more than just a desktop application. It's a complete ecosystem with mobile apps for iOS and Android and a cloud syncing service to keep all of your photos, all of your settings, and everything you create in sync across all of your devices. Now there's lots of resources for you to learn more. First off, there's a well-written complete user guide that's accessible on our website. You can also access tons of video tutorials that we create. There's hundreds of them that'll teach you how to use Photo Raw and every little feature, every little detail of it. Plus, you can get even more by joining our exclusive education and community on OnePlus, where you'll get courses not just on Photo Raw, but also on photography in general. And if you run into any issues, you can always contact our world-class support team who can help solve any hiccups you might run into. And of course, there's a 30-day money-back guarantee. We thank you for trying on one photo raw, and we can't wait to see what you create with it.